Welcome to Maker Conversations. I'm your host, Tiff Marshan from Night Carver Designs. And today on the show, I have Ian from Her For Hand Painted. He is an amazing painter who uses really big, bold colors and heavy, thick black outlines, which I absolutely love. He paints on various materials and does murals. It's been in the game a really long time, and he's somebody who... I look up to in the painting world. I also had an amazing guest host on the show, Adam from Burn 353. Adam, again, is somebody I truly admire in the painting world, so I figured why not have two people that I'd really want to hang out with join me and have a great conversation of just whatever was on our minds. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It was a ton of fun. I know I say that every time, but I mean, that's why I have this show. I just want to hang out with some cool people and talk about anything. All right. Thank you to the patrons who support the show. I really appreciate you. If you want to support this show, head on over to patreon.com slash maker conversations for $5 a month. You'll get early access and bonus episodes. All right. Enjoy the show. A huge thank you to the sponsor, Sabretooth Power Carving. If you're looking to get into power carving and you want to save a little bit of money, use Night Carver 10 to save 10%, and that's in all caps, Night Carver 10. If you've been enjoying these podcasts, make sure you check out Carver Conversations. It's my Sabretooth podcast, and I just recently had Anne of All Trades on there and a bunch of other amazing, talented carvers. So go check it out. It's a little bit more serious side of me. But, I mean, really, not that much serious. All right. Here you go. Enjoy getting to know Ian. Hello. What up? How's it going? Good. There good. Is. We were just saying that you liked pink. And I like the pink background. I do. Got a lot of pink in here. Yep. I wore it my pops. pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I should have put a pink shirt on, too. Got a match. <laughs> I didn't know. I really don't have any pink though. My son though is obsessed with pink as well. So it's a big part of our life. <laughs> we were just discussing. We don't know how to say your first name because we always go by your last name. Because <laughs> we always see you on Instagram. <laughs> and it's uh, like it's Ian. Ian, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I always go by um, I just I actually I don't even go by your name. I just go by your little icon and I go there. I'm like, yo. Art sucks. People suck. What's going on? <laughs> Someone owes you money this week? No, every week. <laughs> you yeah. know how that is. Yeah. I know. I was talking to Adam and I was saying, like, I invited him on here because you guys, first of all, have a similar style where you like the bold colors, the bold, you know, outlines. Similar. I like the same style too. Um, and you guys just like a part of this world when I came on Instagram that I just, I fell in love with your stuff. Like it's, I was like, Ooh, these guys, I'm just feeling all the colors. I just love the materials that you're doing and just like the imagery you're making. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think we both do totally different stuff, but very do it in a very similar way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think the thick, bold lines. I think it's mm -hmm. like we get it from the pinstripers and the sign painters because that's where I get it. I think I like to make bold lines. Even if I do cartoon characters, I thicken mm -hmm. their lines up to make them more my style because I like it really chunky and mm -hmm. iconic, you know? Yeah, and I come from a screen printing background, so I, don't, I always love things with big, bold lines on it, trap all the colors real nice and keep everything clean. Yeah. So in computer graphics too. I, yeah. That's Everything's right. like that. I guess it's, it's just art. I, I don't know for some reason, like to try to make dirty stuff clean, like, cause art is not as <laughs> usually messy, you know? Yeah. So I think I I've always been drawn to trying to make really clean lines and make it not messy because it's easy to splatter paint on stuff and go, we I'm done. Or I've seen these people, <laughs> flinging paint and buckets or and strings over the top of canvases and i'm like hey cool whatever but there's no talent in that it's like i mean who's the painter that's ceiling i mean <laughs> the bucket get to get a, a he's bucket. passionate about this topic <laughs> listen they the had collaboration to with the rope and bucket yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'm Those passionate are- about all our, I mean, when you've flipped through Instagram and, and I'm sure you guys do, yeah. you see some of this stuff and some of it's really cool to look at, but some of it's like, this is bullshit. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Do you and ever get trapped in one of those followers. videos? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you ever get trapped in one of those videos that they get you all amped up and you're excited? Like there's gonna be like this great outcome and then you see it and then you're like- Hey, for part two. <laughs> yeah, no, but like you just get like so disappointed at the end. I hate that. <laughs> or, they're, or they don't tell you and they're like, stay for part two. And then the part two never happens. And there is no part two. They just tricked you. <laughs> this means you guys actually have time to watch stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid to. I do so slow. I manage um, two social media accounts for a power carving brand and then for Workbench Con. So, like, I literally get paid to scroll Instagram and find cool art all day. It's pretty, it's, it's a fun part of my day, but the rest of my day is running around. I'm usually editing a podcast while doing that or working yeah. on my laser now, finally touching this thing and or my CNC. Like, I'm bouncing everywhere. For me, it's usually like when I'm laying in bed trying to go to sleep for like an hour yeah. or two and I'm trying to f- make myself tired. <laughs> so I'll like look at stupid cat videos and silly stuff until I fall asleep. I'll <laughs> open it up to look and then see it'll say like you have 74 new message requests and mm. like that's about the end of it, you know, so it's, you just put it away. <laughs> I try to get through as many as I can, but I never get to actually look at anything. It's just, just don't check your messages. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be hard to deal with, though, because I mean, because of what you do, people want to learn it or they want to ask you questions probably all the time, I assume. Yeah. What paint do I use and what brush do I use? Oh. 15 to 20 times a day. Every Even though day. you tell everybody, right? In every single post I put mm-hmm. it. In every post. And then you also have links to it because I clicked on your links and yep. it's right there. <laughs> I have links to both, but every single day, many, many times every day. Yep. So. Yep. Same. And I and I do try to reference like it's, it's in it's in the notes. Like so, <laughs> I, sometimes you just have to. You're like, go check there. <laughs> <laughs> in a polite way but yeah no that's that is a lot yeah. that's overwhelming because like you don't want to be not wasting your time doing that all day but you're taking time out of your day to write that message in there hoping it'll prevent that same situation from happening but it doesn't no it does not <laughs> mine's like what jigsaw blades do i use and i tell them all the time and then like you said it takes time because i have to take a picture or, or have a picture that i have to send them Mm -hmm. and it's just like time out of my day that i'm like is this person really even going to use this information to do anything because if they are i i'm yeah you hope more than happy but if they're really just like shooting the shit and never going to use this information then you're wasting my time (laughs) yeah need to get some people to send us some jigsaw blades that's that's the thing i burned through so much i am curious but that you guys ever try working with brands um i don't know how to get one yeah i do a couple honestly like so we could talk about it because i represent a few too if, if you want information to to do it really honestly message them on instagram find somebody that supplies what you need and mm. reach out to them let them know that you record your process you're going to tag them in this you know they should be throwing free product at you guys especially because you already tag it so you're doing yeah. all the work like just literally just and then once you get that email set up a phone call and talk to them because well, i mean i'm sponsored literally that alpha, easy yeah by alpha six but other than that i don't i can't get a jigsaw company because bosch is who i use and i don't know if they're even in the united states if bosch, there's a bosch is, usa account is there a bosch usa uh-huh. i'll have to look i maybe i'll message them yeah, I use Bosch blades too. All right, man, you will team up for. Yeah, seriously, yeah. reach out to them, Make you guys. A Bosch post together. You should. Yeah. <laughs> and if <laughs> not, <laughs> think about things like this, like tools today. I don't know if you guys ever see them, but they supply blades, so they sell them. So you can always get them through them too. So there's always resellers too. True. And we could talk about this offline. We don't have to take up your podcast for this, but no, it's interesting because like it's what all, I do for myself. Yeah, we're all trying to do this, like. I am just told my wife, I feel like I'm do eight jobs because I have to be my own marketing person. I'm mm-hmm. the, my own packaging person. I have to go ship it. I'm supposed to paint it. I'm supposed to put it together, put lights on it, make it sparkle and do all this crazy stuff. It's like, I'm, there's all these jobs I have to do. 
-hmm. And then like, I don't have time to do anything else like at all. Like, I don't have time to take a day off. I don't have, I barely, Mm -hmm. I told him just to do this podcast. I had to hurry up and finish painting some so I could have time to do it. But it's just like, um, no, it's good to find um, tricks and stuff. I think to help any of this go better for any artist. I mean, we're all struggling with the same shit. I always kind of like watch the market. So if you see tools that are coming out brand new that a company is doing for the first time or something, reach out to them right away and say, I want to test your product. And they should, they should be like seriously throwing them at you. I get free rotary tools all the time because people want me to record it just to show it working. You know, like that's the only reason I have so many. I can't afford to go buy these. Like, (laughs) I'm like, thank you. Yes, I'll record this. Yes. Like the reason this wall control is in this is in this podcast is because they supplied that to me for free in exchange for me having it as my background for the podcast, you know? Yeah. Just things like that. And and now all my paints are up there. Like that's where I store all my my alpha six because I know we all use the same paint. Like that's where it is. It's up there. So you're saying we shouldn't have tigers and skateboards as our backgrounds? Yeah, no, you absolutely should. <laughs> my, my arts, my arts back there too. <laughs> I got uh, I might have more Alpha Six than anyone on the planet in my shop. So it's, you probably do. I can have. We, can we see? <laughs> you want to see it? I can show you. Yes. It is all over the place currently. I've got uh. We're going on a tour. so here's what i was using yesterday trying to get out of here so that's just whatever's on the table then i've got i'll turn on the lights so you can get the actual real effect here but i got this cabinet with all that in it oh that is a stacked shelf nice he's got Got more jugs got to put some up there then uh It, it is scattered about oh my gosh the black and the white never get put away because I use those uh-huh. straight out of the gallon every single day. And then I've got, you can see in here, all the yep. wow. gallon, big gallons. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, yeah, I get everything by the gallon and then break it down to s- smaller containers. I'm not using half that much paint. <laughs> yeah, hey, give me one sec. Someone's not going to. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I assume we like I definitely use less because I'm I'm wetting my paint and watering it down so it soaks into the wood. Are you you're using acrylic too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're both using acrylic. He's yeah. using enamel. So that stuff goes totally on thick. Different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's like it's like painting with um I don't know if you ever made rice krispie treats, but those marshmallow mm-hmm. that melted marshmallow. Oh, yeah. like, I can't stand painting with enamel. He loves it. I've never attempted it yet. Yeah. He knows how to use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh how you use acrylic all the time. To me, it's it's like trying to work with gel. Yeah. Yeah, so what I don't know. It's just easy for me, it's easier to use because I just thin it with water and just I mean you ha- the worst part about it is you have to do multiple layers. Like if you want it to be opaque, red, let's say you have to do at least two or three coats. You know, to where enamel, if you lay it on nice and thick, it's just one coat. But with enamel, how do you blend anything? Like really blend anything like from one color to another, to another, to another. You basically just got to work it in, like use a little sponge or your finger and just rub it together because it dries so fast. You can't like brush blending doesn't work great unless it's small. So yeah, you just either uh, like, I got these like real small little like sponge tip like sticks i kind of just rub it in with or okay, just my finger sense. all the time i've seen you do like a little like um like a pixel like or a dot process too where you bl- fade it out with like little dots i don't yeah, know yeah see that again is going rhythm. back to like my screen printing roots and yeah. trying mm-hmm. to just almost doing a half tone ish look but with dots that makes yes. sense i still think the only uh video i ever did to show how to like palette and reduce it was the one i sent you when you were trying to use enamel god <laughs> my my daughter finished that project though and it ended up um turning out good she i i was using enamel with my daughter because she was doing this outdoor mural thing mm-hmm. on wood and uh, she wanted to make sure it didn't 
do anything funky. So I'm like, well, en sense, enamel's right? the best. I mean, you put that on there, it's staying for life. And so she's like, okay. But once we got into it, she after we were done, it she's looked good. But she's like, I'm never using enamel again, Dad. <laughs> I think you were saying the same thing. It's tough. It's a lot I haven't tried it since I was a kid. Like I've never really tried the good stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I bet you it's 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 a whole different world. Yeah, you're laying on color. You're laying it on thick. Yeah, if you get if you get it palleted right and get the right consistency, you can pull such long lines and keep it so clean. That's what I like about That's it. That's nice. Yeah. And pull a super long line and have it be very clean, you know, and not have it, not have to keep like stabbing in little pieces of it. Mm -hmm. I guess my thing is like, I'd always thin it out when I did use it. And when I pull a long line, it, it would like separate. Like, I think it was just too thin. Yeah. Probably going too thin. It's going too thin. And then you go any thicker than that then it was drag it was like you know yeah. it's like it's like I go, like, go in perfect. the middle yeah i need in the middle <laughs> there's no there's no right answer because you can have it perfect and then if it's sitting out too long it starts thickening up if it's a little too humid it changes it oh it's the word I mean, every <laughs> surface every temperature i mean i i do it so many hours every week i got it i could tell right. as, soon as, as soon as i pull it the first time i could tell if it's right or not so it's yeah. I get a lot of practice at it. My buddy pinstripes with the alpha six enamel and um, he's always palleting on um, the little magazine, you know? Yeah. yeah, That's what I do. Um, yeah. But like he keeps the bottle, but he keeps the bottle and he only has a little teeny tiny cup of it that he's messing with. Cause he's like, you said, he's like, it sets up Keeping so fast depending on the humidity and stuff that you can't pour a lot of it in there. Cause you don't want it to just like curdle up on the top and stuff. Yeah, I use uh, one ounce cups and I rarely yeah, fill it more than a fourth or a half full. Yeah. I mean, sometimes yeah. I just squirt a little drop on right on the my palate and that's it. You know, I just use old magazine and just rip through it. Yeah, it does spread. I like the, how the spread of um, enamel though, like the coverage of it is really. Oh, it's gorgeous. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a whole I mean, different world. Pretty much everything except for red and yellow. I can get down. Occasionally I have to second hit white. If I'm doing yellow over black, I have to second hit pretty much every time. Sometimes mm -hmm. red, but any other color. I mean, I could even do neon green straight over black one hit. That's awesome. I was, I, we, we were talking before this and I had a question. We were looking at your videos and I was telling her, I don't, you were putting like um, metal flake or like glitter on after you, it looked like after you laid down the color, then you just went in with colored glitter. On the glass ones I just yeah. was posting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um so like, I started are you laying that or are you just sticking that to the paint? Um no, I'm just using size like clear okay, like clear. But I've uh instead of just laying down glitter, we've been trying to do like I've been doing gradients with glitter and like I full saw that blending <laughs> together. Like of course I couldn't just sprinkle it on, I had to make it really hard and like You're driving me fucking crazy. I watch one of your videos over and over again. I'm like, how is he shadowing that with the glitter oh. and stuff? <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm spending more time putting glitter down than I am painting on it. I'll be back. Right. Uh, and yeah. I don't even know why I need to know this information because I probably <laughs> never will put glitter on stuff, but like you just want you just can't wrap your head around why the glitter's staying like well like I'm like he has to be using size, but it looks so clear that like some size has like a cloudiness to it, but you, the size you have, it's so clear you can't even tell. <laughs> yeah. that it's alpha anything. six, alpha six oil based size. Yeah. I probably got asked that question about 150 times this week. <laughs> we Instagram and TikTok from all of the posts that I made, like hyping up this glass sale for today. And I was like, the first day I was like, all right, I'm not answering this one. Cause I'm getting asked a million times. So it's the first time I've answered it all week. It's right so, here. Yeah. So I was talking to her. Do, do you get the same thing? Like when you post something like say I made a picture of a frog, all of a sudden everybody wants you to make, frogs like oh absolutely make, yeah like if you post a picture of a panther then everybody's like i need a painting of a panther man i need this bad yeah <laughs> for like, sure it's like well, it's they, like i think people see it and are like oh i need one of those and then they want it with their thing on it you know mm -hmm. so it's yeah usually whatever whatever hits i know i'll get like a little string awesome. of 
something similar, but especially when it's, but then sometimes there's something I just absolutely love. And I'm like, oh, people are going to freak out and no one cares. <laughs> yeah. No one cares. No I one likes it. No one that. We understand that. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh my God, it's like the best thing I've done in forever. And no one, no one asked for another one. No one likes it. I'm like, oh man, it's so fun. I'll do this one forever. And nope, no one wants them. I have some on my wall that I was like, this is going to sell in five minutes. It's going to be so great. It's still on my wall. <laughs> but no, I totally get that. Yeah. These Ninja Turtles, I was just, oh, we were talking about these earlier. I was just carving these from my house. And like now people are telling me that I got to do, futurama or do marvel characters next i'm like no i'm not just like making tiki i mean i will if they're paying but i'm not just making tiki's all day like this so is a fun project are the tiki's hiding behind you another another version of those or are those different those are their friends it's, <laughs> it's shredder and splinter over there that's awesome the turtles are over there yeah I still have to make April O'Neil and, you know, the rest of the pals, you know. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They're fun. But uh, I was like, I, I again, you can only use your hands for one thing at a time. And there's so many things that we all have to do. It's like, can I spend another, you know, month just carving Ninja Turtles? I got other <laughs> things I have to get carved or, you know, it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's the hard part. Saying. You're making stuff at your house. I don't even have a single piece of my own stuff at my house. I, we, we don't. Like that's yeah. yeah, that's the thing. And it was like, let's do this. Let's have fun. I I had the wood and I wanted to play. Like I got it's it's curved okay. wood. So that's what made me want to make tiki's. And uh, I had it's these ten curved. boards. It's just oh, got like a cool. slight curve to it. So I was like, oh, let's just make tiki's. It'll be fun. But yeah, it'll be fun it won't be complicated well <laughs> I, I i'm actually i am getting paid to make them so that's the fun oh, okay. part about working with brands is the uh, power carving company is paying me to make those so each video i make okay. for them i'm getting paid for so i found a way to make something for myself and get paid to do it that's cool i'm a businesswoman <laughs> first <That's what> I <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got a couple of my own paintings but not many because usually when I try to make something for myself, somebody buys it from me. And mm -hmm. I always say, I'm not going to sell this. I'm not going to sell this as I'm making it. And as soon as I post it, somebody offers something to me. I'm like, I'll turn it down. And then somebody offers something else. And I'm like, finally, you just like you give because I want money more than I need a painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any wall space anyway. So what's yeah, that's a good thing, though, because then you don't have this problem anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, the, all, I <laughs> posted like 30 some for sale today and there was that I did the Homer hand holding the donut I wanted that one so bad I was like I'm just gonna list this for like two thousand dollars and then if someone yeah. buys it I'll be willing but I ended up just selling it for normal price but Aww. I really wanted to sell it for the, the like I really don't want to sell it price mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had that happen to me I did a Bart Simpson collab with um this tattoo artist Amy and she just killed this design of Bart Simpson, like skateboarding on Bender from Futurama. And then she sent it to me to do my thing. And then I added all these like old school skateboard stickers and stuff. And then I mm. made it into a actual 3D woodcut painting. And then we sold it and like I gave her some of the money and stuff like that. But it turned out so good. I did not want to sell it at all. I wanted to keep it. Some so of them hurt to, yeah, to let go. Of. Bad. Yeah. I, wanted to keep it. <laughs> I think there's always that I can make myself another one too, I if I will. really wanted to, but you never will. But you, you know, that's always in my mind. I'm like just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The worst. I don't have time to sleep, much less make something for myself. Yeah. yeah. So how are you fitting in your orders? Cause you're, you're making stuff that you're launching and you're doing that. And then are you also doing customs as the same, at the same time? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much booked until the end of the year right now. So Beautiful. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I worked on all those ones I released today. I've worked on those over the last like month or so. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a friend of mine is owns a tattoo shop. I mean, he like, tattoos all day then like watercolor paints all night and then he comes in here one day a week is like learning enamels so me and him sit down and paint glass together one day a week oh that's awesome so i've been doing that for the last i don't know four or five weeks or something one day a week just 
knocking a bunch of these out. And then on the last couple of days, I just had to wrap everything up to get it ready for today. On top of, I'm painting a entire food truck right now, but I got rained out on it unexpectedly the other day. So I was able to jump back and finish these and had to go paint some windows and then wrapping up all my signs. I think I've got 30 jobs that are like started and in progress. And I'm trying to have finished by the end of next week. So it's like, no, wait yeah. a minute. The last time I podcast with you, you were talking about slowing down and I was, yeah, gonna... I did that for a little bit, but then like, <laughs> you know, it comes back to that whole money thing again. And he was telling me, I'm going to slow things down. I want to knock my list down. And then I, I, did. I, <laughs> I kept it around like 30 to 40 jobs on the floor at any time for a while, but I think it's at about 75 right now. Wow. Nice. It's basically at the point now where it's like, man. Like I got to decide if I even want to do more before Christmas or not, or just. How do you deal with that? Do you give them just like a long wait time? Do you not give them an expected wait time? How do, how no, do you No, I give those? everyone. Yeah. I'm usually like two to four months. Two to four months. So if it's usually pretty simple, like just some simple lettering, or they supply the logo, I usually knock it out faster. If I mm -hmm. have to, my biggest bottleneck is having to find time to sit down and draw. I'm always yep. like, well, I'll wrap up everything that's in here and then I'm gonna go take a couple of days and draw everything. And then that just, there's always something to do. So it's so hard to get to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's always like this thing, like, and I carry them in my bag with me thinking I'll just stay home and just draw it home mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> I carry them around with me every day. And it's like this weight I got, like, I got to finish all these designs, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. My biggest bottleneck, I think, is the design process because I do a lot of custom stuff where, like you said, people come to me and want a specific thing that, you know, doesn't exist. There is nothing even reference. I'm referencing pictures. I like this one painting I'm doing right now. I have 30 or 40 different reference pictures I'm working off of because I'm doing this whole scene. Like I'm mm. doing a whole scene from like a movie and there's specific characters with doing specific things that he wants in this. And it's mm -hmm. like it's crazy, like just to design it to wrap my head around just the design part of it is crazy already so that's what slows everything down to me and so, then you gotta make sure you're charging appropriately for all that design time too which is i never time. am never yeah am. got it i don't know how to charge more i need to charge more <laughs> you gotta start clocking yourself honestly like those those habits are so hard though because like we're always jumping from one thing to the next thing right we don't actually stay like okay let me log in my i don't know if you do um but i know myself as i'm not like sitting here going okay and i should because a lot of my friends do do this starting this project okay log the time they start and then they log when they get off so they're tracking hours i'm like i really got to start getting that habit i don't do that with design work but the actual painting i do i film everything in real time mm -hmm. so when i finish it i get to see how long everything took so sometimes i'm like oh man i kind of ate it on that one or other ones are like man i did great on that one but it's you know some of them you feel really good when you finish other ones you're like man that took three times longer than i guessed it would have right and okay. that's the hard part too is you, you don't know how long it's going to take sometimes and yeah, you give a price up so front different. so what do you use to film because i i've been wanting to film and get better films of my art in the process like are you using a GoPro? I'm like, what are you using to film your? I have a GoPro, right? Right. I don't use it very often. I I'm right now. I'm filming from three angles, so I'm using two iPhones and I'm using a Sony, it's like okay. a Sony, nice. like yep. you know, camera. And what kind of editing thing software are you using to do it? To edit it all together. I was doing everything in iMovie, but now I got a, a friend of mine's been helping me out with it. Okay. He's been using Premiere nice okay. so now i just load them all i just have a couple hard drives he comes in and grabs one drops the other one off and i just load for a few days and he comes and gets it so that's been helping a ton that's awesome having someone help out because i mean just editing those videos that was eating up almost almost mm -hmm. a whole day's worth of time every week yep. i'm finding yeah, it really a challenge to, to edit myself <laughs> yeah it's a hard balance because it's like for me when i edit my stuff is before i go to bed and like when I get up in the morning and it's such a bad, I mean, we all do it though. It's such a bad habit. First thing I'm doing is like, okay, boom, just all grabbing all the footage from yesterday. And I'm trying to like yeah. make short films out of it and, and go, cause you constantly have to be moving. Well, and I'm having the problem where my phone is so full of videos and stuff that 
it's getting to the point where I can't even use it. I need to either get a GoPro or some other kind of camera to do all the filming and video. My problem with my phone is my uh, iCloud is full. Yeah. So I have to constantly phone. delete stuff. I have the biggest one you can get. And oh, okay. okay. So it's like, I think I have something like 120,000 photos and like 10,000 videos. I wouldn't yeah, even know how to get to the cloud to delete anything. I've never been to it's the cloud. It's actually before. easy. It is actually easy <laughs> once you like dedicate some time to go and do it. Cause I I've had to do it before. Like, oh no, I need this. I don't have it. You know, like so you can do it, but yeah, I have about three or four days a week. I wake up to your out of cloud space and oh. before I even stand up, I have to go and I go like three weeks back and delete all the videos that I know I've pulled on to a hard drive already. So it's like a look outside and be like, there's plenty of room out there. (laughs) (laughs) That's tough though. So you must just have like a bunch of extra hard drives then just piled up with your stuff, I assume. Yeah, there's a few. I got a handful, like five terabyte ones, just full of videos. It's just, but once they're on there and the video is made, I'm never going to see them again. You know, it's not like I have time to go back and re-edit. I would love to go back and re-edit some ones from a few years ago. But I probably were, was filming those as like time lapses then. There's nothing to edit anyway. I've made so many yeah, paintings no. in the last year that I I couldn't even, I think I've forgotten the one, some of them. Like, I really think I've forgotten. Like, if somebody would show me, oh, yeah. I'd be like, I think that's my painting. I think I did that. But I honestly <laughs> am doing so many that I don't even remember them. And I'll be scrolling through my own Instagram to delete stuff. And then I'll be like, did I paint that? Like, when did I do that? Like, what? <laughs> it's like, what is that? And then I'm like, I, I don't know if you've ever done it, but I've, I just go through, especially the little ones, when I get a couple little paintings, which hardly ever happens anymore, but I knock them out so fast that I don't even remember them. <laughs> yeah. You ever had that happen where you're just like knocking all these little, like the, you do all those little sword paintings and stuff on glass. Like, it looks like you do like a hundred of those things. <laughs> yeah, I think I did eight of them for this release, you know, and it's just yeah. like, or like those little Instagram signs, you know, I knock out mm-hmm. you know, on some weeks, 10, 15 of those a week. So it's just like, I would never know which ones I did. I mean, I could tell by the shape it's mine. Yeah. But beyond that, like, yeah, no, I'd like, have, I'm, I think I did that. <laughs> on a few hundred of those by now, it's just like, I don't know what, you know, it's exactly. <laughs> my phone sometimes will do that thing you know like one year ago today first of all mm-hmm. i don't like when it shows me work like it's yeah. like don't put work in my face for this reminder video <laughs> but then it's like uh i'm like man that was a year ago you know it feels like mm-hmm. 10 years ago easy sometimes it'll pop up a co- cool painting that i forgot i even did like i said i'll just whoa that's what happens to me my facebook popped up like Five years ago today, you posted this, and it was this painting that I did that I really liked. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't even know if I have a picture of that. So I screenshot on my phone a picture of it because I'm like, now I do. <laughs> I always want to go back to that video or something like that and play with it. I'm like, well, where did I even take that? Or what what phone? Or where is it? Like you said, like you're never going to open those drives, even though you have them. It's like, where's where do I have that hidden somewhere? I got to get better black, at that. Blackberry that has so much of my art on it. And I can't get the art off because it's a Blackberry and like I literally can't get back on it. And like I lost, I lost it and had to switch phones a long time ago. But all I ever do sometimes is lay asleep before I sleep at night is think about all the pictures I lost on that phone that are just still on there. I still have it just sitting in front of me. <laughs> you need to find like a 2008 iMac or something and something. probably work with that so much of my work is just hidden in there <laughs> mm. i'm the curious work. though uh for the screen printing what what's your whole history with that that's something you were in for a while yeah i started screen printing when i was 15 oh wow i did it for uh ran a shop for i mean i worked at a bunch of shops then i ran a shop for like 20 years then it uh burned down so it kind of kind of ended that kind of stopped me with that i'm still i mean i'm still doing it but um i'm pretty hands off with it anymore like we kind of merged in with another place that kind of helped us out right after the fire and then some of the people that work for me went over there so still handle stuff and do it the way that we always did but yeah so i've been i got like 30 years of screen printing experience that's awesome what what were you printing everything just like 
like um shirts i did flat stock for a few years um i did shirts originally then i did flat stock and i was like i'm never going back to shirts then i ended up going back to shirts and doing that for another like 20 some years mm. but yeah it was shirts mostly uh bands and breweries okay yeah i was telling him when i was, I was like going through your page and stuff i noticed that you definitely seem to be like heavily influenced by music or really passionate about it and it kind of like just shows through you i love it yeah for sure yeah that's what i always use music i like in my posts instead of trying to find the whatever the, the song. Yeah, yeah the songs that are supposed to make your post go crazy or mm -hmm. something but like i want to be able to handle making it like watching it to even get it together you know so i just <laughs> i want to hear like, yeah i don't post any music because i get flagged every time i post with any i get flagged i got kicked really? off of instagram for a week because i posted with a song i'm like you provide the songs you let me pick the song mm -hmm. on your thing like don't let me pick it at, but i stopped using it. now i just do stupid voiceovers on everything which is dumb and i hate it but what am i supposed to do I, every time I, I like your voiceovers, by the way. But every time I try to post <laughs> with music, I get I get flagged. It's that bullshit. sucks. And like I got flagged today for a hate speech. You know what my hate speech was? On this post, it's like, what's your song of the day? Like, what song are you listening to? I put Teen Angst by Cr the band Cracker. Since I put Cracker, I am a freaking hate. And then they tried to flag me. And I'm like, are they not going to let me post today now? I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, you want to see hate speech? I'm going to show you some fucking hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fed up with all. I don't even know what the rules are anymore. You know, no it's one like. Does. No one, like, no you one can't, knows the rules. Like, I don't understand how you guys even get away with posting with music. Because I literally can't. Like I, I said, I whatever they I, provide. Yeah. I have a friend whose account does the same thing as yours, Adam. It's, it just. Every it just, time I get. Yeah, flat. it stops. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate they take my post down and everything yeah. <laughs> nope yeah i, I had I'm it a couple times when it's like just filming something and it was on in the background mm -hmm. i've had a couple of those mm -hmm. i always try to be careful to make sure i get rid of that but a couple times i've missed it and i've gotten flagged for that but anytime yeah. i pick their music it's fine what what brought the transition from the screen printing to the painting like how did that happen i'm curious what um that. i did sign painting like when i was young um i kind of always painted when i was younger but then some of the screen printing shops i worked at still had like the guys green or sign painting back in like the early mid 90s so as sign painting was basically dying off mm -hmm. there were still some of the guys doing it and i'd help them out because you know i kind of had a painting background as i was a kid so i helped them out with it from time to time and then i did some murals and stuff like that i kind of always did more mural work than sign painting work and then, I don't know, before my shop burned down, I was doing some mur mural work. And then I was like, I really want to get back into doing some sign painting. But I just couldn't find the times. We so The shop was so busy all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was doing a couple things here or there for some people. But then after the fire, I was it was so crazy busy trying to just get everything, you know, sorted out and figured out. But then eventually I found some time to do a few and then I did a couple and kind of no one really cared. You know, I was like, I'll post these. Maybe I can do something mm -hmm. with it. And like, and then all of a sudden I had one just like take off. And then it's just never stopped ever since then. I mean, that was, it's been years now, but it seems like I haven't had a good night's sleep since <laughs> where it just kind of took off. I mean, this, I couldn't, I don't have time to do anything else, even if I wanted to right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you know, have a family but, too, don't you? I, I assume. I, I yeah. Mean, which i never see you know yeah i mean that they come here and help you know i see then yeah. you know my wife comes and she packs a lot of the signs and i got another friend who packs there's two of them that pack the signs so at least i don't have to ship anything but i mean it usually will take two of them two or three days to pack up what it takes me a week to paint got you wow. like everything's all custom boxes custom mm -hmm. shape and you know and it I mean, on a good week, I'm doing 25 to 30 signs a week. So it's, it's a lot to pack. Yeah. Oh, that is. I can't even imagine painting that much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff's getting more complicated because of me. I'm like adding lights and layers and making 3D stuff. And 
and it just keeps getting more complicated and adding resins and I don't know. It's getting bad. Like I need to stop myself and just go back to like the base. Because you want to create something new. But you got to he has a beautiful space here. Like I I appreciate you showing us your space. Like how long have you had that? I've been in this spot a little over a year. Okay. So the spot I was in before was about a fourth of this. And oh, that was wow. a struggle. So now it speeds me up quite a bit by having enough room to I mm-hmm. could be prepping stuff. So I'm usually half of the room is prepping next week's work while I'm working on this week's work. So it's always kind of like a work and pride. Everything kind of moves down the line. So I have like a pretty good system where I keep things like flowing, like getting cut. These ones are, you know, the first coat, second coat, and then get the patterns ready. So everything kind of lines up. So as long as I stay ahead on that stuff, I never hit like a downtime. That's like the only way I can crank that much. Cause then I'll line up a bunch like, okay, these all get the same color. Mm-hmm. So I'll do a whole bunch of things with the same color together. I'll try to like group things together where I can, whatever will be the most efficient and knock things out. Yeah. We were just talking about having like the lack of space at home to do those kind of things. Like the yeah. dream is to have what you have right there, like a dedicated space for your craft. Like it does, like you said, it takes you away from your family because it's not at home, yeah. but it allows you to. Yeah, work. I mean, my shop's almost 20 minute drive from my house. So it's, you know, I mean. Yeah, that's a, that's substantial when it's something you're there all the time. Yeah. And I mean, you're here for 16 hours. It's like, man, I might as well just sleep on the couch here instead yeah. of even driving home, yeah. you know. But, yeah. Well, that's why I don't have a dedicated space. Like, cause I was fighting with that. I got a wife and four kids. I, I don't know how I would do that. So I ended up just making it my house and I, but they, like I was telling her now they're tripping over art and stuff, but mm-hmm. they've just learned to live with the, I mean, arts around the house all over the place. And this is how it is, <laughs> but at least I get to spend time with them because at night when I'm sitting here painting the TVs right here in this room I'm in now and I'll paint and watch TV with them and hang out with them and talk, talk about what their day was like. And it's the only time I get to talk to them because other than that, they're, they're teenagers. They're all over the place. (laughs) That's, I guess your benefit of using acrylic over enamel. You're not going to want to be painting enamel inside the house. Exactly. Yeah. So true. Yeah. I didn't even think yeah. about the smell. A couple hours of that, you turn around and everyone would be on the floor. <laughs> yeah. You know, I clear coated something in the house um, only because it was pouring down rain. Mm-hmm. I could not pour a, take it outside. It had to be clear coated that night because I had to ship it the next day for mm-hmm. a show coming up. And I'm like, I'm just going to clear coat it on this table right here. And I cracked the window. I went in the kitchen and turned on the event. Um, on full blast on over, over the stove and i just like and it's still man you could it reeked no, it up reeks. the house <laughs> i've done it in the basement thinking it'd be fine and no then <laughs> all upstairs it's just like disgusting and i didn't yeah. even do aerosol i just like i painted it on you know i'm like it'll be okay it'll be okay no did you do it real slow so that it wouldn't <laughs> smell <laughs> i was telling it to be quiet you know <laughs> <laughs> Don't wake anyone. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> no, but like for me, I have um I have this Mom, room. I feel funny. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> I have this room here and then I have my garage. And like that's also like my workshop, my wood shop. So the whole battle of the dust and then you're finishing out there. That's yes. a problem too. <laughs> so it's smart. Have you always had a dedicated space? Uh, yeah, basically. Cause I, before this, I would just do it in my screen printing shop. Then yeah. after that, I had like, I moved to like a really small shop then a bigger one. Basically I had like a little room that didn't last more than 10 minutes. Then I had to go to a slightly bigger one. Then I was able to get this spot and it's great. And it's like a retail spot. So oh, it's nice. a full wall of windows. My last one had no windows at all. You know, so it's like you walk outside and it's like, oh, it's pouring rain or it's dark already or it's, oh, we got mm-hmm. a foot of snow. Right. You know, Surprise. Like, <laughs> don't even know what's going on. So now I got like, even though when I'm filming, I have to like close curtains over half the windows. Otherwise, that enamel so glossy, it glares so much. Mm-hmm. So I have to close it out, but I can still see out the other side. But it's nice, like knowing there's an outside. I saw not too long ago, you finished your painting of the windows. You put 
you hand painted a bunch of stuff on your outside or outside on my windows. windows yeah. yeah well i almost finished them i got them like 90 percent done and then yeah. it was like cool four months ago and never got back to i just need to uh finish and seal the gold leaf i guess all i really got but i'll eventually do it you know maybe in january i'll have yeah it's hard doing stuff for yourself <laughs> i couldn't believe i even did i was like you know what i'm doing it i'm just doing it right now and I stopped and I think I just took a couple very, very long days and just knocked it out. Well, see, I got a two car, well, probably two and a half car garage that that's where I cut all my wood and it's my wood shop. But I'm wanting to make it a space more like what you got there where I got tables, you know, I can, there's nothing else in there. It's all, you know, free floor space if I clean it out and make it a dedicated you know, just shop for art where I could paint in there, cut in there. But yeah, I only like, have uh, I have a small room for cutting in now. I had a bigger a second area, but I lost that. So now I'm the room's just so small. I don't like dealing with it. So I just cut outside. I mean, yeah. snowing, even if it's 105 degrees, I cut outside. Just cut you outside. Know? I just cut. I get out there super early or do it super late, <laughs> but I just cut outside. And then uh, I've been doing that lately. Yeah, uh, winter's a little rough around here. Though. Yeah, winters. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's winters are really bad for me. So it's, I mean we're not that far apart from each other, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, where are you guys located? I'm I'm in Springfield in Illinois. Illinois, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm in northern Indiana, so I'm northern. just outside of Chicago, but right, I'm right on the southern tip of Lake Michigan, so we get yeah. all that weather blows down from canada and just blasts us all winter long that's gotcha. no fun <laughs> I, I say i'm in springfield massachusetts yeah so it's funny yeah do you You're... do you get a bunch of snow there ever or oh yeah I mean, no we get everything yeah. okay. we get the nasty humid hot weather everything a little mix you of everything all the fun stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. we're just blessed <laughs> but um I just think it's so cool. How long have you been doing the um, merch? Because I'm assuming that just kind of happened all the way through since it was your background. Because you have the most stellar merch. Like, I love how it's always changing. You're always branding yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I've always done for other people. So, I mean, as soon as I was, as soon as I decided to just call this, like, basically, I just used my nickname for the name. I was going to do some walls somewhere. And I was like, I'm just going to make some shirts. So I just went the day before I was going to do some huge mural. I just went and printed some shirts for myself. I laid out, designed it and printed it the same day. That's always fun. And then, uh, you know, so I kind of had merch basically as soon as I decided to put it, throw a name on what I was doing with mm -hmm. this. And then just ever since, I mean, anytime I think of a new idea, I just do merch. I mean, it's kind of what I've always done. So it yeah, so just kind of in. feeds right in. Yeah. And it's like. I like it when I run over and print on myself, which doesn't happen very often anymore, but it's kind of a nice, you know, that's like, awesome touch to it myself, yeah. you know, or maybe I'll go over and print the first 10 and mm -hmm. then like, are right, you guys wrap this up? I'm over this now. <laughs> I got it you, out of me. <laughs> you always get me with your hot pink long sleeve shirts. I'm like, damn you. I want that <laughs> every time. You know, the <laughs> first time I did one of those, I did a run of shirts. And I made one on pink for me. And I posted a picture of me holding some sign or something on oh. that pink one. And I got so many messages like, hey, I, how do I get one of those pink ones? <laughs> so I put it up for pre-order and sold an insane amount of them in like a couple awesome. days. And then, because before I was just like, well, I'll just no one's going to buy anything besides black. You know, so I was always just making black. And then, and then I, now I'm even trying to do some other colors. They, they do okay, but black and pink. Yeah, by far go the best. I think a nice like teal color would do well, like mm. a really bright teal for you because you yeah. have retro mint too. Yeah. yeah, I use so much teal that I was gonna do some of that for like in the spring to make some spring stuff. But by the time yeah. I was like, oh, I should make some spring shirts, and I was like, oh, it's 110 outside now, so <laughs> probably don't need any long sleeves for a while. <laughs> Yeah, sadly, it's like right now is probably the time to start getting ready for your spring clothing line. You know, it's like yeah. you really got to get on the jump on those things. I love the hats too. The hats look really nice as well. Yeah, yeah. I haven't made those in a while. I need to, I keep meaning to do that, but it's the, um, with the, you know, everything's been so crazy trying to get stuff. Mm -hmm. Hats have just been terrible. 
Yeah. So it was right, like they've last been summer, yeah, last summer hats were sold out everywhere, all the ones mm-hmm. I wanted. You can get any beanies you wanted. And then as soon as it got cold, beanies were gone and you get all the hats you want. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and it's probably going to be the same thing now. I probably should have ordered like a couple hundred beanies last month to have ready yeah. for, you know, October or something. Yeah. But yeah, so maybe I can get my like summer hats. I'll order them in December for next year. Or yeah. Something. The last two years, it's just been, I mean, like I said, I've been screen printing 30 years and I have never had the problems of trying to get stock in. Like I've, seen. I've had issues just trying to get paint, not not the alpha paint, but um, my primers and stuff, any of my aerosol paint. Mm-hmm. I went to Lowe's. And I went every store all around us where that holds spray paint and no one had black paint. I was just yeah. trying to find black paint to do a project. And I'm like, I just need I needed matte black or satin black. And no one had it. And I'm like, why does no one have black paint right now? What's going on in the world? For me, it was (laughs) Marsh ink. I don't know if you guys have ever used it before, but I have like aerosol cans of Marsh ink. And like one of my friends, I got him using it too. I fill in all the black lines, like when I make a CNC carving and that's what I use to fill in the lines. Mm -hmm. The company couldn't get the cans, so they couldn't make cans. And I actually had to change a process to where I airbrush it now. Because they, you know, they didn't have the supply to make them. They have them now, but now I've got a big bottle of ink I got to use. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this is my process now. This is my process. <laughs> yeah, there's been, uh, for me, sometimes, like when I'm coding, I use a lot of foam brushes. and I couldn't get mm-hmm. those for a while. Wood putty, like I seal all my edges mm-hmm. of all my wood. And uh, I couldn't get wood putty for the longest time. Sandpaper for a while, I couldn't get. I mean, it's just the weirdest things. I couldn't get my MDF wood sheets of wood for like two weeks. I was freaking out because I'm like, how am I going to make art now? Like, I can't switch wood that has grain in it and stuff. Right, my it process, changes your whole, yeah, your whole look. So I'm like, yeah. I was freaking out. And then finally the they shipment came in and I was like, oh, well, thank God. And then it was, now it's twice as much though. Like I was paying 25 to $26 a sheet. And the other day I bought a sheet is for $49. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> My sheets are up to 138. So that's, that's bad. Yeah. How many pieces were, you get out of a sheet? Um, it depends. I mean, some jobs take two sheets for one job. Other jobs I'll get. The average thing I do, I usually get about eight out of that's a sheet. Cool. But some of them are half a sheet for one thing. Uh, sometimes, you know, I got one job. I'm working on right now that was three sheets for one job mm. you know so it's like yeah and i had the same thing i was missing it wasn't that they were out of stock there was some problem with the delivery company yeah. and oh yeah so it was like a week where i didn't have it and i was like in full panic at the end you know i was just like <laughs> i was like man i got like a couple thousand dollars i paid you for this wood i yeah. need it now you know it's yeah i mean like i said i got like a flow and if one thing gets screwed up oh it, yeah like whatever I was missing when it affect me for that week or probably not even the next week, but like two weeks, three weeks down the line, you know, I would feel it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's a lot of anxiety when you're running a business though, too. Like this is trying to keep up with the orders, trying to manage your time, right. <clears throat> Getting mm. your supplies in like it's, it's a tough life, but it seems like, you know, we all don't mind living that crazy life and, and putting in the hours because of the passion of what we're making, you know, like it's cool well, stuff. I know I've told Adam this before when he is stressed out, but there's no <laughs> such thing as a sign or a painting emergency. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I mean, it's not going to make or break someone's like, you know, this isn't a live or die what we're doing. It's true. Yeah. Hey, if it's an extra week, like I'm going to make it as, nice as i can for you as fast as i can but there's it's not an emergency yeah exactly. yes. no i'm you know i don't get enough sleep already from the hours i work i don't need to be laying awake like oh i gotta get this done or this done you know it's i got like a flow when i knock them out and i feel like i knock stuff out pretty quick but you know yeah, it seems um, like you are you're getting them in and out pretty fast if you're doing 25 a week yeah but it's still you know but i bring in 25 or 30 a week so it's kind of <laughs> constant you know yeah it never ends so it's i mean this you know for tomorrow uh my friend that comes to 
pack or whatever. And I was like, well, yeah, just so you know, you got about 40 glass paintings to pack <laughs> tomorrow. And those are so stressful to pay. You know, we pack those like triple layers of foam and mm. special like heavier duty boxes. Like they're so nerve wracking to pack those things and ship them, you know, spend hours painting something on glass. And then, you know, it's have UPS drop it off a truck or something. Yeah. I had, I had to ship something international the first time in my life when I was like really early on into doing art and stuff. And um, I ended up making this crate for this painting because I made this woodcut painting and I'm like, I'm afraid to just ship it in a box overseas. Like it's going to get broke. So I made this special crate, screwed the painting to the crate and did all this yeah. intricate stuff probably overkilled it but it got there safe and sound but in the end nowadays i just throw it in there and let it ride and i've never had an issue so like i think i overkilled it when i first started but i totally get it like when you're when you're shipping stuff you're like is this gonna make it i don't know <laughs> like it depends on what they do to it with a forklift or whatever they do <laughs> they have you ever gotten them the set truck. back to you though like Mm -hmm. I've had the horror of like a package got sent back. So I got to see it go through the mail twice. And I'm just like, the art was totally fine in it. But like how badly those boxes get beat up on that transition. It does scare you. <laughs> yeah, nope. it's pretty. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of terrifying, especially the really big stuff with really mm -hmm. sharp, weird edge, especially if it is no big flat area for it to rest on. Mm -hmm. It's huge, sharp. I mean, we try to like, crate it in and like frame it out as best we can you know but it's there's a lot to get those things to kind of float in the middle of a box it's scary to ship stuff places sometimes it is like it, yeah <laughs> i mean 99.9 percent .9 of what i do ships so it's like i was gonna everything. ask that yeah so, yeah so i mean big barber signs all of that that's getting shipped out yeah i mean maybe once a month someone will come pick something up that's about it it's <laughs> it's rare yeah, yeah it's same. yeah almost everything ships so it's custom box ship i'm glad almost you have all help. my stuff goes to new york and california where where does your stuff usually where would you say your two hot spots that you ship to the most southern california is definitely my biggest by far um after that new york was really big for me but mm -hmm. after covid i don't think it still hasn't come back yeah. I mean, it still goes there. It seems like a lot to Texas, a lot to Florida. I'll say Texas is my big one. It's usually Texas. Yeah, yeah. mine was New York, but now it's like, like you said, there's Texas and Florida's a, a new one that all of a sudden I'm getting lots of orders from Florida. Yeah, but I think I do a lot of lot, people um, are moving that way. <laughs> yeah. Do quite a bit to the UK too. Oh, like oh, yeah. We ship pretty often to there every week at least. So I ship cool. to Germany a lot and um, sometimes England, but mostly Germany for some reason. Germany, Germans like my stuff. <laughs> and New Zealand's a big one for me too, especially merch. I do a lot of merch in New Zealand. Oh, that's awesome. So it's like, but even like sign shipping them, I was like, man, this could not possibly go any farther away. Right. <laughs> and this one's going, you know, talk about being nervous about it being mm -hmm. destroyed on, in transit. And the price, when you tell them the price of it, most of the time they understand because they're used to it. But right. I'm afraid to tell them, I'm like, you don't want to know the price. And I'm like, oh, that's what I thought it was going to be. I'm like, oh, my God, that's what you pay for shipping on everything. <laughs> yeah. And some of that, especially like Australia and New Zealand during like the middle of COVID when they were like, weren't bringing in shipments, only air stuff. And it was like, I think for a while it was like $85 for one shirt to go to Australia. Oh my god! It stayed that way for months. I was just wow. like, "Well, not shipping here until this goes away." It's going to be a couple of weeks, and it was a long time. Yeah, I mean, how do they buy anything? Right. I don't know. I'll be like, "Oh, this is cool. I want to buy this." Oh, cool! It's only a hundred bucks to get it shipped. You know, it's like yeah, that's uh, probably a very big local community just because yeah. of that. You know, like it's when your community yeah, like, has to get together. To yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You hope for a lot of cool shops there, you know, like, yeah, be like we're going to figure this one out on our own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, when you guys say New Zealand, all I could think of are these, there's this couple called Beardy Curls. I don't know if you follow them at all, but they make the coolest, um, 
lasered keys. Like they're like a, when you turn 21, you buy a custom key for your family. I don't know. It's one of their traditions, but they're amazing. And I just think of them. They're just such a powerhouse couple. You guys got to check them out. They're pretty cool. But um, it sounds like we all kind of have like that graphic background. So it does make sense why we like those black lines outlining everything and keeping it clean. Even though I do more of like a messy, transparent paint, you know, I still like to outline everything with black. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I put a heavy black outline on almost everything I do. Yeah. It doesn't feel complete. I was going to say that it's not done until the black line is on, right? Yeah. And it's like... uh even just seeing that go on, I'm like, all right, this is coming together, you know? And sometimes I'm like in the middle of it. I'm like, man, this one's a little soft or not enough contrast in this one. I pop that black on and I'm like, all yeah, right, like, oh. you know, it's, it is, it's, it's yeah. satisfying. It's that instant gratification at the end. It was like, it all comes together. Cause especially, yeah, the paranoia. Especially mixed with um, the bright colors. When you put that fat black line mm -hmm. over a bright pink or orange or lime green it just really is like bam is in your face yeah that's even a lot of my videos i just do the black outline mm -hmm. yeah skip over all the colors and only show the black because that's like when it really comes to life especially if it was like a eight hour painting or something it's not by time lapse that down to like oh i can't even get people to watch like 25 <laughs> seconds seem too long anymore it seems like you got to make 15 people don't seconds. want painting videos anymore i feel like yeah. i'm like I don't know what to do because that's like my bread and butter, you know? <laughs> oh, I guess I've just found make them shorter. 15 yeah. seconds work great, 20 seconds. But yeah, I always kept them at 30 seconds. But yeah, to go from eight hours to try to show all that in 15 seconds is pretty tough. So a lot of times I'll just show the black. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I make the wood cutting videos where I just speed up me jigsawing the piece. An actual time, it's probably about an hour, 40 to 40 minutes to an hour. And then I speed, I crunch it down to 15 seconds, sped up. So it's mm -hmm. just like people love it. And I keep the sound in. It's like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. those are my biggest. They don't want to see my art. They no. don't want to. See, everyone wants to see those videos. That's all they watch. People so want to like, see me sand off the black ink after I spray down my carving. They just want to see yep. the, the carving appear and that's all they care about. They don't want to see it painted. So it's like, just give them that. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you want? This Sanding the wood? <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a game though, sadly, that we have to play as part of our art is you have to market it to, to get it out there. Which I like, I like doing it. I like making the videos and stuff, but it, are it's you not entertained? Yes. <laughs> is this not what you exactly. came for? <laughs> I feel like that sometimes, though, as a creator, like, what are you here for? Because it seems like sometimes I post stuff and like, like he says, like, it's one of my favorite things. I think everybody's going to love it. And then it just falls on its face. And then I'll post some stupid thing where I'm just like voicing over me cutting wood, which I think is boring. And then everyone loves it. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> I used to know what was good and now I don't. <laughs> if one works, just do more of that until it stops working. That's basically yeah. what I do. You know, just go just go with it until it dies yeah. and then hop on whatever happens next. You know, that's it been my new so often. Yeah, my new motto has been like just lean into it. Whatever's working, just lean into it. Like is it's all you can do until it stops working. Here's my question. Do we even really need to make the art anymore? Can we just make the videos of us doing like just a video of cut until I'm doing really close shot of me painting a black line and then a really close shot of me filling in some color and you never show them the actual finished product. You just show test it out. Of you gotta test it. This theory. Give it a try. Yeah. It might yeah. be your hit. I want to see. You need to make what and when you get done, it's just a shit a piece of wood with this all this color all over it have you guys ever seen um not another teen movie i don't know if you've seen it before but no. there's a scene where she's painting in the basement and it literally is just like you're getting the shot of the back of the easel with the painting so you can't see what her art looks like and mm. she's just getting filthy she's getting all into it and then it pans out and it's, it's like a so smiley clean. face and like and that's all it is it's just like <laughs> but like 
that kind of video I think would yeah. be hilarious. I'm gonna have to send you a snippet of it. But I know we um I don't want to steal all your guys' time. I know you probably have more painting to do after this, but I just want to say thank you for coming out and chatting. Like your stuff seriously inspires me to keep going and having fun because I just see all the cool stuff both of you are creating all the time. So I just wanted to have you on here really to tell to get to know you more and tell you that how much I admire your work. Yeah, we just try to keep pumping stuff out, you know. I figure more stuff put out there, more people will see it. And then the more we get to make, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, I mean, if I don't keep posting and keep selling stuff, even though I'm overwhelmed most of the time, it's better than the alternative when I'm right. Go yeah. get a real job or something. I don't want to do that. So don't you know, do it. I, at this point, like could we even survive in a real job? I don't think I could anymore. Like it's, no, been I mean, it's, it's been 25 years for Man, me. It's only been about 10 or 11 for me, but it's been too long enough to, I know I can't go back. I'm on my third month being full time and I don't want to go back. I like yeah. this. I like what I've set up for myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm it's hoping I don't to be, have to. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be doing it on your own. So you get all kinds of free time and get to do yeah. stuff whenever you no. want. Like <laughs> now you work 24 seven instead of nine to five. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I take about six hours off a day. I only work like you told hours. me today you <laughs> couldn't even take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was this week. This, week. this week was a bad one. It was <laughs> I was trying to keep track and I hit like over 120 hours this week. And I'm like, I'm not even keeping track. Anymore. Oh, man. Like, yeah, that's a lot. I guess right. it's a new week now, so <laughs> I'm like 14 hours in on today already. So it's almost time to close up. Yeah, yeah. I got a couple more hours in. <laughs> Still got like 400 more messages I want to try to respond to before I go to sleep. Yeah. Just get that like notebook pad and get a little copy standard message. My brushes are. Did it? Did this? Is my paint <laughs> is copy paste. Copy paste. I'm just gonna start writing it out like on a post-it note, and sending a picture of the post-it. right. <laughs> My, my analog responses to your questions That's awesome. <laughs> here you go That'd be awesome. not even not even a picture of the product just write down what it is on a piece yeah. of paper no i love that <laughs> hot pink my new policy from here on out yeah. <laughs> you just have a board with them lined up you're like okay it's this one yeah, okay next exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> not even in my notepad on my phone. I've got to carry around to like a stack of post-it mm-hmm. notes with me. They're all beat up and stained. <laughs> That's awesome. Listen, it's, it's shop life. Nothing is like perfect uh, in there. At least I know around here, like these brand new floors already have paint on them. It's hard not to. I'm the, I'm the worst in my shop. I don't know if you guys do this. I I'll like a carpenter will write my notes down on wood. So yeah. all my notes are on chunks oh, of too. wood. And I'm like, what the hell did I do that for? Now I have to ch- carry this piece of wood around with me all day. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, I do the same thing, especially measuring or having to cut. I always write it on wood. And then, then I, I got this weird of it with my phone. Yeah, the most random shaped piece of wood with like of course it's the sharpest thing ever <laughs> sticking out. You bump into it all day. And you're like, you don't even know the the information on this piece of wood has yeah. <laughs> changed to history. Someone comes in and throws it away. I'm like, don't throw that away. That's so important. You guys need to make a little collab video just on that subject because that's hilarious. Like, I think it would hit home with all the artists that follow you. <laughs> Someday oh, the two of us will do a collab something together. We talk yeah, about we... it enough. So yeah, I, you guys I make great videos. I won't be us painting. It's just going to be us like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Letting other people like air their grievances and we'll, we'll help them. I out. think we should do an 80s montage video of just us just running around, like having fun. <laughs> no work at all. No work at all. Like, totally not us. <laughs> Pick up a jigsaw and then we're at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been wanting to do this all my life. I, I got to, I got to get at somebody that's really good at, making videos because i want it done right to help you i want to do a montage with me and my jigsaw of like my buddy my buddy like (laughs) running around my buddy and me (laughs) pushing it on swings and stuff have your proposal right there for bosch to send you or what what brand uh jigsaw do you like oh i bosch bosch Bosch, okay (laughs) yeah i used to walk Oh, but I well, use Bosch blades, so yeah. the blades are where it's at. That's where all the money comes. You only have to buy the saw once. That's yeah. true. 
those, yeah. uh, those blades, you know, you burn through those pretty fast. Yeah, yeah my saw is just my, my homie, man. Like, it just fits in my hand so nice now that I've had it so long. I literally have my hand worn into the grip. <laughs> I just had to get a new one. I wore mine out. It was like the little like channel that holds the blade in place. Yep. It was the blade was jumping over it. And I was like, yep. what is going on here? And I looked at it. It was worn down on one side. <laughs> so smooth. The blade could just slide right off. The little switch that you that un- lets your blade fall out and that you on the Bosch, you just flip it and it falls out. Mine's yeah. about ready to break. I could feel it getting loose. And I'm like, please don't. Because then I, I I don't want a new saw. I love my saw. <laughs> you dip, it, dip it in bronze when you're done with it. Hang it on the wall. Love it, man. Oh, my God. That's such a great idea, though. You should totally make a little plaque dedicated to it. <laughs> I got saw as family. I don't know if you ever watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but in part oh, yeah. two, he has the famous chainsaw that says saw as family engraved on the blade. And I have that like on my on my saw written on on it of like this is my boy man it's my homie <laughs> it's my good well, time when it boy. dies yeah <laughs> put it on a plaque with the years that it was in yes. service yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll do a memoriam video on Instagram yeah. for it for sure <laughs> call it my buddy number one so that way you, like, <laughs> you can have many and, and it just goes black and then has the date <laughs> 2012 to 2022. And play sad piano music <laughs> I'm doing see, this. we have all these amazing ideas for reels and things like that it's just like no time yeah the time to execute it <laughs> i could give somebody ideas all day i just don't have time to do any of them <laughs> you got to get your kids trained to do your videography and your editing that's what it comes mm-hmm. down to is put them to use i'm gonna mine are they're six i think they're now. about ready <laughs> they use yeah that's right base coding right now right no, they're painting. Oh, painting. they're full like, on. My, both of my daughters can paint probably just as good as I can if you awesome. just let them go to town. So yeah, they're doing their own thing. And one daughter's got her own face painting business where she goes around and I love it. They pay, her, but they do it different. Like then I, when I was a kid, I did some face painting when I was a kid at festivals and stuff. But now they get the festivals to pay them to show up. So they're already getting three, four hundred dollars just to show up. Just to get and then there. they get all that extra money from the people. And she's busy the whole time she's there and making actual cash. I'm Love proud it. of her. I'm like, yeah, it's, how old it's is she? Cool. She's eight, just turned 18. So she's just like taking it and just going with it. And then my other daughter is doing all these murals and do, doing all this stuff with school and stuff with art. So I'm just like, go for it. I don't stop. I don't get in their way. I just let them do their thing. <laughs> i like it though the people going yeah. right into the trades again keeping it going and and not doing Fun. that corporate job like i had to half my life was wasted in a corporate <laughs> job you know so i'm like it's time for the other chapters to start <laughs> i did 20 yeah, years i'm good <laughs> if you had a corporate job or you actually worked like a nine to five and got weekends that i, I did know, i did sounds all right at some time i had it know. all but you know what i was doing all day is i was literally um so do you know all the coupons you get in the mail and the newspaper, the booklets of coupons? Yeah. My company made those. Like not the one, not the Val pack, but like the actual ones that are inserted. And all I was doing all day was organizing where Papa John's coupons were going and then getting their mm-hmm. Papa John's artwork done and then managing all these spreadsheets. It was so mind numbing and yeah. boring that all I was doing was dreaming of painting when my kids went to bed at night. Like it was like, I get it. Like, you know, the, the, cause I had the time off, but I was just so miserable the whole time I was there. I felt like I was chained to my desk. I was the same when I was in my corporate gig, when I did my, yeah. um, my graphic design, I did graphic design for 13 years for a major sporting goods place. And they treated me awful. And it was the worst just environment, like just, mm-hmm seriously depressing just to walk in that place every day but um not only that like they just this this ever there's a meeting about everything there's a meeting about a meeting about a meeting and it nothing got done and then they wanted to know why you got nothing done because we were in meetings <laughs> all day you know so i i don't miss it at all like i hear you i don't want to go back to it at all yeah but I that's mean, probably why i put in all yeah. the hours that i do doing this i've never done that so i guess 
Yeah, you never had to experience it. Yeah. No, I never had to do that. I always did screen printing at like small shops, you know. And so yeah, it is a different world. You know, the nice thing about a corporate job is that if you're well, yeah, insurance, a hundred percent insurance. Well, then you pay for it and you don't use it. It's so expensive. Um, and then, but it was just like the facilities are nice and like mm-hmm. comfy, clean air conditioning and all that. Like there's those kind of things, flexible schedule, but otherwise you're just sitting there and you're just doing like I was doing Popeye's and Papa John's and you're just like staring at pizza all day. Yeah. No, I just dream about getting one day off. I basically have to leave the country to get it. <laughs> day off. To yeah. for, you know, it's the only time I actually will not pay attention to my phone all day and but that's but your, you're you're doing right though is you kind of you control yeah your i schedule. mean it's totally my fault but yeah, yeah yeah i was gonna say if you had to be honest like how much of it is us that we just don't want to take the time off because i don't know what to do with myself anymore when i do take time off like what do i do oh. rest like what do i do like i don't i don't have i don't even know what to do with myself anymore <laughs> i just think about painting all the damn time <laughs> i feel like everything is always like feast or famine so i just yeah. feel like to take it whenever you think it's there to take and but then when it never ends it's like maybe i did you slow, start I did taking slow it down time. a little bit yeah. you know i i stopped taking orders for a few months and like got it under control and i've kept it under control probably up until very recently and mm-hmm. it's only because i had a couple very large jobs that took you know as long as it would normal i could normally get 40 done in yeah so it was uh so those but once those i got one left of those that i'll have done by probably wednesday and then after that I should be able to just crank. I'll do every easy one I have and knock all those out. And then yeah. I'll feel better about myself. Yeah. When there's less. Yeah. When there's, well, it sounds like your list never gets smaller, but I know <laughs> what you mean. Like if you get all those ones that, you know, you can knock out right away and then you can spend that time dedicated to creating like a new design. Yeah. Well, and the list is so, you know, there's like 75 on there. Well, one of them might take 15 minutes where another mm-hmm. one might take five full days like yep. five 15 hour days, you know? So it's, it's, yeah. it's very deceiving just to look at that. You know, mm-hmm. I almost need like an estimated number of hours more than number of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A way to break it up easier for you to understand what you have. Yeah. And that's like with mine too. My list can maybe only be 10, 10 commissions long, but some of them are super detailed scenes and going to take months and months to make this, this painting. And then other ones are like, like you said, it might only take me a weekend to do it. Like it's not going to take that long. So when I look at my list, I just see 10. I'm like, 10, 10, what? Like, are they all hard? <laughs> I freak out sometimes. <laughs> then I yeah, start I think like, that's not that bad. <laughs> last year, right when it was getting closer to Christmas and I was starting panicking to get everything done, I did break it up. And I had a column like easy, medium, hard, very hard. And I <laughs> very went, hard. tried to do like, instead of doing all the easy ones first, I would try to like, like I divide them out how many there were and would like do one, 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 you know, instead of like knocking them all out and be like, Oh, I just knocked half of it out. And then like basically everything I have to do takes forever. <laughs> you, know? you need something yeah. to feel like you're getting something done in there. In A the quick middle. win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The bang for the buck ones, you know, like those are my favorite. I it's like refreshing. to have one little one in there somewhere where you're like, I can knock it out. Yes, I got to win. <laughs> well, I usually will. I, I haven't got to do it in a few weeks, but I usually like to take Sundays and I work on art all day. So I don't paint. So Monday when I come back, I feel like yep. I forgot how to paint because I didn't do it for one day. And then mm-hmm. so I usually will knock out all those little Instagrams. It's kind of my warm up. So that's mm-hmm. usually my like. And then it knocks the list down at the beginning of the week. And I'm feeling, oh, man, I just knocked out eight, you know, in the first <laughs> do you couple like freeload hours. a bunch of them so that way you can just release them? Is that how you do it? Yeah, I do some of those Instagrams. I just always have like 25 or 30 blanks that I'm every gotcha. week, every other week. I cut like 25 or 30 more of those. So they're just always like getting prepped for the next week. Mm hmm. But anything I know I sell a lot of, I try to always have them prepped and then I can crank them out. So Super I usually smart. Do, yeah. Like, I usually do the first two days of the week on like my store stuff, and then I do like four days on all my commissions. So it's usually like you know, more way more of the time is spent on commissions, but that uh yeah. it can't all those aren't quite so easy as the ones no. I put in my store. The ones yeah, in my exactly. store are much, much more affordable, but I can knock them out faster. 
That's mm-hmm. why I like doing pre-sales, you know, like if you've made something already once and then you know how long it's going to take, then you, then you take the orders. That's always so nice. Yeah. Then you, yeah. yeah especially if you know exactly how long and you're, it's the second time and third mm-hmm. time it's always faster. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. if you do six or seven of them at the same time, you do like all the yellow, 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 yes. yellow, red, red, yes. red, you know, yeah. it's like, that works great. That was doing all that glass stuff. It's like, well, I just sold, I think I sold 45 or 50 things a day, but almost all of them are done and ready to ship. Which yes. Is it's like a great feeling. So good. I've switched my models. I was just like you guys were right. The commissions. And it was just like, it gets daunting. Cause when you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of new designs you have to do, like, you're just like, okay, I gotta get to that. I gotta get to that. Like it's always on your mind. And then to try it. But then if you switch to the other model where you're making stuff and then it doesn't sell, then you're storing stuff. So it, yeah, it definitely is a challenge. I think it's good. Like he has a, a a store, like you were talking. I'm at the point where I need to get my store up and running again because all my money is tied up in just commission work. So therefore, if I don't get a commission done, I'm not getting any money. Like right. I'm having to knock out work faster than I even think is possible because I don't have. I used to have pins, stickers, T-shirts. I said you I need merch. Let, it, let that I money let come in that way. Side. And I mean, it only takes a minute, but you let it fall to the side because you're so busy with the mm-hmm. actual painting. And your hands can only be one place, even though your mind's everywhere. It's but now I'm, I have zero stock of anything. And I'm like totally starting from scratch. And I'm like, when am I going to have time to design stuff? When am I going to have time to go have somebody make it? It's, like, it's it's tough sometimes when you're doing this all by yourself, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, this morning I was waiting for the, like to at, turn all of my, uh, new release today like to turn it live so i really i was like well i don't want to start drawing something because that's coming up so i just i laid out a new shirt design while i was doing that it's like i'll knock out a long sleeve design but i said 30 years of screen printing and graphic design for screen printing i can knock out a shirt design pretty fast yeah Yeah. it's like i knocked one of those out real fast while i was just waiting to activate the thing today so just in a couple weeks i'll have another new one on hot pink (laughs) Nice. No, it's black. <laughs> oh, sorry, Adam. No, good. no shirt. <laughs> good, because then I don't have to. I don't have any money, man. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> Pop out another hot pink, and then I have to buy it. <laughs> yeah. The hot pink long sleeves I have, they've been out of extra larges for like four months. That's why I haven't been able to restock them. I don't want to yeah. restock them without extra larges. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, one of the most common sizes. Yeah. Crazy. Well, I'm 2X, so. You know, just keep them coming this way. <laughs> no, I, I don't know why every time you pop and you always do the graphics on the sleeve. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that. Me. I love that. It's my favorite. Like, That's what I did today. Yeah, I drew up like three color sleeves. You know, I love doing those. <laughs> yeah, they look good, though. Like they nobody do. does sleeves. I mean, if you're going to have a long sleeve shirt, print on the sleeves. <laughs> Do the stuff that I know any screen printer, all the screen printers that worked for me before would just be like, Are you serious? <laughs> you know, two two sleeves with four colors each and are different, not even the same design, you know. Yeah. Like, well, it's got to face the right way. So you gotta have two two sets of screens. It's true though, yeah. If you want to look right, it's gotta be a certain way. Yeah. But yeah, hey, I can imagine. The, you had to pay your dues, so make them pay their dues. <laughs> yeah. Like I've done tons of this. You guys can I know it yeah. can be done. Your yep. turn. <laughs> then they'll be like, I don't know, maybe you should show me how to do this one. Yeah. <laughs> you print your 10 and you walk away. There you yeah. go. <laughs> the first one and be like, all right, well, just bring them to me when the rest are done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Now you know. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna call a night because I am getting tired and I'm old. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> I just look deceivingly young. That's why. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right? Can't well, show nice our ages. You guys. Yes. Super nice getting to know you more and, and hanging out. And I do. I love the background and vibe of your shop. It looks like a fun place to be hanging out. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there's a lot going on in here. I got a just added a 1950 foosball table over there. So, yeah. of course. Well- for all the time you have to play foosball. <laughs> <laughs> it's been used only once by me, but other people have used it. Nice. It's something for somebody to do, though, when they're hanging out packaging your stuff and they need a break. <laughs> yeah. You know? Hey, come work. We got foosball. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> You're allowed 15 minutes each every four hours. <laughs> After you pack five things, you yes. get to play one game of foosball <laughs> by yourself. By yourself, yeah. yes. I don't have time to play with you. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, yeah. Guys. Thanks for having yes. me. Yes. All right. Have you a guys. good night. Bye. Bye. Well, <laughs> that was a once in a life situation right there. These two are heroes of mine in the painting world. I truly admire their work and I just love seeing it. I love following them because just it's just so satisfying seeing everything they keep doing and pushing further and further. The consistency of how they continue to knock out these amazing pieces just blows my mind and I love seeing it and I love just continuing on that journey with them. So I am so excited that I got to hang out with both of them today. And uh, well, let me tell you about some things that are going on with this lady right here. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from the podcast, just a couple weeks off, so I can focus on finishing up and getting ready for the Makers Camp that's coming up and finishing up some house renovations. And then I'll be back with some great episodes I have one more episode after this, and uh, I'm pretty excited about which one that's going to be with Andy Bird. And after that, there'll be a little bit of a break, and we'll come back kicking with uh, Cold Brew Andrew. So I'm really excited, and I hope you guys are enjoying this journey. If you're going to be at the Makers Camp October 7th in the Catskills, come say hi. I'm going to have a ton of goodies. Like they loaded me up at Sabretooth and have sent a whopping, like, I don't know, 250 gift bags. Just having uh, like a free burr in there, some coupons, some uh, pencils and stuff. Just fun things to say. Thank you for coming over to our booth and carving. We're also going to have hats that we're going to be giving away. And there's going to be some carving contests. So come over and say hi to Sadie from the Awesome Orange and myself because we're going to be there working away and having a lot of fun, a lot of open carving. So come check it out and uh, hope you enjoyed the show. If you want to support it, head on over to patreon.com slash maker conversations. All right. Have a great night.